Hey, how's it going everyone? And in today's short video, I just wanna share with you one little feature, which is super handy. If you need to share your localhost environment with somebody else on the internet. So what I mean by that? Well, imagine you're developing an app and you're on localhost, right? So I am running this front end application Next.js on localhost 3000. This is the same to do app from the previous AWS videos. Let me just prove that it's still working. Um, we're just inputting the entry right there and it is working. And imagine we want to share this localhost environment with somebody on the internet. So then what are our options at this point? Well, if we don't know about uh, this feature, then it would probably be that you need to host this app somewhere on the internet, Vercel, AWS, Google Cloud Platforms, and things like that, Azure. Um, but that's not convenient because there is no hot reload. So when you change something on your back, uh, on your um, in your VS Code, the person is not going to see that change propagating right away. So basically, you would have to deploy that app again, and that's not convenient. You want that person to see what you are doing basically live. If you're changing like some uh, font color or text size or a button color or whatever, um, they wanted to have that ch change in front of them right away. So uh, this feature is built into the VS Code. If you're using it, you don't even need to uh, have uh, any extensions for that. It's just built in. So on the right side of the terminal, there is a port tab. So if you click that and click forward port, we're running our application on port 3000, hit enter. And now you see this has created a tunnel for us. There is an HTTPS link. It's a secure tunnel as well, which is nice. And now if you basically copy this link um, and toss it to somebody else who you want to share this, uh, your local host environment with, they will be able to see what you see here. Let's, let's do that. So by default, the visibility is private. If you right click on this entry and select the port visibility and make it public, there's a little consent or a prompt here saying that you're making it public, continue. And then you can either open it in the browser right away, or you can copy this local address, whatever you want. So basically if we hit open it in the browser, there we go we see exactly the same thing that we see on localhost, except this is now um, tunneling through this uh, address here. So if you grab this link, give it to somebody else, they will be able to see what you are seeing. So let's um, let's see what, uh, what uh, the user is going to see uh, when you share this with somebody else. I'm in incognito mode, instead of localhost, I'm just gonna enter that URL there. Uh, there's a little uh, a little kind of warning screen from Microsoft that hey you uh, want to only visit this web page if you trust the whoever sent the link and so on and so forth because this could be malicious right uh, but basically all you have to do is just click continue and there we go so that would be the scenario for the user who is opening your link they can see now this app and if you change for instance the color of the button to green boom just like that, without even needing to reload the page, it really loads automatically. They are able to see the change. So again, going back to the scenario with the designer, if you need to tweak certain things on a website and they want to take a look how that particular change looks on the real website, there we go. You can uh, now work in uh, teams like that. You can also forward a backend port like it doesn't have to be a front end application specific. So I'm running the backend on port 5050, as you can see here. If we go back, add the port, it's 5050, hit enter. That's it, the entry is created. Again, by default, it's private, right click, port visibility public. Now we can either open it in the browser or we can just copy the link. That's what this first icon is. Uh, stands for. Now, uh, we don't have anything, uh, any GET request on the root address. So, but if we go to API v1 to do, we are able to fetch our list of to do's. And keep in mind, again, that we are on the internet, right? On HTTPS connection over here. So basically, if you grab this link and give it to somebody else, they will be able to see the same result that you are seeing here. And again, same thing, if you make any changes on the back end, this will reflect over there as well. 
All right, and uh, that's pretty much it for this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed this feature. I didn't know about this until recently, um, but I did know about the other uh, solution, how you can forward your port, um, which takes a little bit more configuration, takes a little bit more time than just, you know, going to your VS Code and forwarding your port right away from here, literally two clicks of a button. So if you wanna hear about another solution, how you can forward your port, then stay in the video. If not, then we'll see you in the next one. All right, for those of you who are interested in seeing the alternative to what we just did, you would have to go to ngrok website, ngrok.com. So basically this is uh, the same feature. Essentially, it's gonna do the same thing that we just did, except this is a little bit different in terms of like functionality. It's giving you a little bit more flexibility. You can add like, if you log in, uh, if you register, sign up and then log into your account, you will be presented with this first screen, which is getting started. You can download this Angrok for your platform. And basically uh, there are three steps which are really uh, straightforward, uh, only like two commands that you have to enter and we we're going to go through those uh, but let me just point out a few things like you can add team members um, you can also um, after we establish a tunnel we'll have an agent over here which we will be able to refer to and basically there's auth tokens that you assign to different users and then you can revoke those tokens basically taking their access to a certain tunnel and stuff so there is there is just a little bit of uh, more features however um, you would have to subscribe for some of them. Anyway, let's go back to setup installation. It's again, straightforward. You download the client for your operating system. Mine is Windows. So I already download this and it comes in a zip format. You unzip, there's only one file that comes in a zip and it's ngrog.exe, right? Executable file. You can't really mistake uh, mistaken it for anything else. There's only one file. So then, uh, let me run that file real quick. I have it on my desktop. If I double click the AXE, then this console opens up. And what you're gonna do in this console is basically you're gonna copy this first command. You have to do this first command only once. As soon as you enter that in there, then OS token is safe into configuration. That's it. You don't have to do that uh, every single time you run this. Uh, and then basically you need to run the ngrok. HTTP and then the number of the port. So let's do that. Ngrok, HTTP and port 3000. And there we go. We are online. We are forwarding our localhost 3000. And this is the address on the internet that you need to refer to in order to open up that uh, dev tunnel. It's again saying constant screen, basically it just hit visit site. And there we see the same app that we uh, that we had on uh, other uh, uh, other tunnel, right? So same thing. Uh, it comes from um, your local host, basically, and it does exactly the same job, right? So you can open up another window of Ngrok, another instance, and then forward your backend port the same way. And if you look into the uh, dashboard here, agents you see that we have a new agent established, which is the one that we're running over here. So it also gives you like um, a status of your endpoints over here as well. So uh, then you can stop this instance remotely, restart, update. So if you have other users, you can also manipulate with their instances that way too. And that's pretty much it for this video. Um, this is the alternative. If you need to work in Teams, if you need to have like authentication implemented, so you don't want to have like any strangers uh, running your, um, uh, accessing your tunnel and stuff like that, then you can just by all means explore this Angrok in much greater detail. I just wanted to show you that this is an, just an alternative to what you just saw inside of VS Code. But basically for the most part, this should be, uh, more than enough for you to kind of quickly forward your port and share that with somebody else. That way you don't have to like configure this Angrok and download and you know, all that. All right, and that's it for this video. Hope you learned a thing or two and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.